So what is a myomectomy and what are fibroids? Well, in this video, I'm going to share some information on the surgery called myomectomy and my journey of fighting off fibroids. Hello and welcome to my channel. So another quick disclaimer, I know that this topic will be very irrelevant for a lot of you on my channel. So I do plan on creating a series on this topic for those of you out there that are looking to learn more about overcoming the surgery, learning more about fibroids, and just finding support and comfort. You don't have to watch it. I know it's a very different topic than the rest of my topics on my channel but uh, it is in part of my journey of marriage. I wanna share a little bit of my journey for someone else that's going through this as well. Um, it is a very serious, important, very high risk surgery. So feel free to watch, if not, it's okay. I was told that I need a myomectomy done back in September of this year, 2021. Um, I have this little notebook here, a little journal that I got like two, three years ago. I'm not a big fan of journaling. I just do it when there's a huge occasion happening in my life and I consider this surgery to be a huge occasion. And so I decided to take notes about it and just journal about it. A myomectomy is to remove uterine fibroids. So it's to remove fibroids from the uterus or the womb. Fibroids are benign tumors that grow on the uterus. Benign means non-cancerous. My myomectomy surgery was Thursday, October 28th at 11.30 a.m. till about 2 o'clock p.m. this year, 2021. And today is December 22nd, I believe. So I'm now in post-surgery. I have no more pain and it's just so nice to walk around again. So a little bit of backstory. So I got married October 2020 and my husband and I planned on having children right away. I would do my fertility test, which I have here. Um, we were just praying and hoping to have a child one day. We kind of just talked to each other about if it doesn't happen within a year, then we would talk to a doctor or at least like a fertility doctor or something. So as September was approaching, it's, it was almost a year, I went into my OBGYN to talk about what's going on. I'm not pregnant yet. And so they offered to do some tests and everything and to see if everything is and everything is working. I never thought I would ever have to talk about this on the internet <laughs> or ever have to go through this in my life. But I know that this story can help so many of you out there on the same path of the same journey. So bear with me. So they did an ultrasound and a week later, they called me back into the office to talk about the ultrasound and my OBGYN told me, everything looks good, everything is well, you know, except, except, he said, he found or saw according to the ultrasound, a fibroid the size of a golf ball. So like a golf ball is like this, right? So something this big was growing on my womb. And I did have an ultrasound a year prior, the summer of 2020 for another issue and there was no fibroid there. So this fibroid had to start growing pretty fast within the last year. I did post this on my Instagram, um, the empty womb. Basically, it was empty with a bunch of fibroids on it. After being told I have a golf ball sized fibroid in me, it might be best to take it out to improve fertility. And probably most of you, I didn't want to do that. Um, it sounds sounded scary. It was a nightmare. I was shocked. I could not sleep at night some nights. I had another tear fest, basically. It was just sad. Um, but my husband and I always kept praying to give us clarity and what to do. And so I would just anticipate this day. I knew this day was coming. And it's just, every day I kept getting closer to the surgery day, I kept crying. Finally, the day of the surgery, I just accepted everything. I trusted in God even more. And I went ahead and got it done. Here's some information about the surgery, what's gonna happen. 
So having a myomectomy, there's a six week recovery stage. So you may be out of work or you're gonna be out of commission <laughs> for six weeks. There is a two night overnight stay at the hospital. I was hoping to leave the first night but my OBGYN or my surgeon recommended to stay another night to make sure everything is okay. Having a myomectomy is similar to a C-section. It's not the same as a C-section because a C-section, you're pulling a baby out, but with a myomectomy, you're pulling out fibroids. You're pulling out fibroids. So you're still gonna have that incision, just like a C-section. Um, I think the, the cutting of the flesh is almost the same to get to the womb. But anyway, uh, they put you under general anesthesia, which is, if you don't know, it's a very deep sleep. So you won't feel a thing. That was one thing I was fearing, is waking up and feeling the pain as they're working on me in the surgeon room. As soon as I got to my uh, hospital and I did all my paperwork and everything, um, they have you sign in, do paperwork, you sign consent forms and everything. Um, they put you into a hospital room to get you prepared for the surgery. They do some tests on you, blood tests, pregnancy tests to make sure you're not pregnant. They get you ready and then they give you a shot of something. I forgot what it's called, but it starts with a V. And it's like a shot that starts to make you feel sleepy and sedated. And that was the last thing the nurse did to me was she gave me that shot. And after that, I have no memory. And she gave me the shot and she wheeled me out of the room into the elevator to get to the surgery room to start the procedure. And I have no memory. <laughs> so that anesthesia does work. So if you fear anesthesia, trust me, I was knocked out. Or in the hospital room, the room where they prep you to get ready for the surgery, they have you take everything off. They put you in a hospital gown. They have you put all your belongings into these bags, which they'll put all your personal belongings, including your phone, into lockers. And then you have to take off all your jewelry. I had to take off my wedding ring, sadly, earrings. And they store everything into a secured locker somewhere. And then once the surgery is over, you get all your stuff back. Then after that, they will wheel you up into your surgery room and you're knocked out. I have no memory, which is a good thing. <laughs> so that's my first time ever having anesthesia and it's my first time ever having surgery. So after the surgery, your activities are limited. You can't bend over, you cannot walk hardly, um, you're going to have bathroom issues. Using the bathroom is going to be hard. I never thought in my life walking up the stairs, driving a car, and using the bathroom would be hard, <laughs> but it is. And so when I woke up from the anesthesia, my husband was there and he had some gifts for me, flowers and a teddy bear. And my parents were there, but they had to leave because only one person is allowed in the visitor's room. And I remember just feeling just, I woke up from it with pain and just tired and uh, my husband ordered food but I wasn't really hungry at all my appetite was just shot I could not eat of course because you just went through a very tough invasive surgery so the last thing your body wants to do is digest food so I remember vomiting a lot because I kept pressing the button for more medicine because they hook you up to an IV of course you're on an IV to get your medicine and I guess I was on an IV for morphine and they told me if I need more morphine just press the button silly me I kept pressing it a lot thinking that the more I press it the more the pain will go away and the result of that was a tremendous amount of vomit oh I just wanted to sleep the rest of the evening my husband went home because only one person is allowed, sadly, because of this global issue, if you know what I mean. YouTube doesn't allow certain words right now. And then that night, it was so hard to sleep with all that pain. It was miserable. And then throughout the night, nurses will keep visiting you to do more blood tests. And my husband works in healthcare, 
as well. So he kept calling them the vampires <laughs> because they will come into your room to get more blood work. And throughout the night, like 10 o'clock was okay, okay, fine. But then two in the morning and then one time like at four or five in the morning, they'll wake you up to get blood work done. Oh, I just want to sleep the night through. Um, with all that pain it's like oh. the next day in the morning five in the morning my nurse came to give me some more pain medicine and blood work to draw blood work and then she had me practice walking five in the morning so she helped me get up out of the hospital bed and practice walking because you can't walk correctly and that was just another level of pain I never want to experience ever again and then one more thing they put these leg warmers on you um, it's these two orange um, cast like warmers on your legs and I forgot why they put that on you I did ask the nurse what is it for and I forgot it warms up your legs which is good so I think it may be to not have your legs stay close to each other since you have that incision. If you do know what these things are on your legs, drop a comment below and let us all know because I forgot. I had a very low appetite, of course. It was really hard to eat. I only just kept drinking. Um, I just kept wanting fluids, juice, and water. And the nurse will uh, recommend that you drink pop or soda. Um, I kept drinking Sierra Mist. I haven't had pop in about four years. I stopped drinking pop in 2017 and she recommended Sierra Mist, the lemon lime bubbly type pop to help with your your um, digestion and everything. So I was like, okay, I haven't done this in years, but I'll do it and it helped a lot. to end this video so I got the surgery done this year October 2021 my age is 31 I found out that I need the surgery done at age 31 um, I am black they say it is high among black women but I am half Jamaican on my dad's side I don't know if that's helpful um, I'm 5'2 and I've never had children before um, I know that it is high among childless women. I've always wanted children though. I've always just desired to be a wife and a mom. Um, my pain tolerance is pretty low. I'm not the one to tolerate pain. My weight, at the time of the surgery, I think I was about the same, 108, 110. My weight has been fluctuating between 108 and 110 since I turned 30. I've always been 100 pounds. But now I'm 108. It could be because of the mozzarella sticks or the fried chicken wings. We don't know, but <laughs> uh, I've been trying to get pregnant since I was age 30. I got married at 30, so that makes sense. I hope this video and I hope this information and I hope these details help you along in your journey of having a myomectomy or overcoming having a myomectomy. If you found out you need a myomectomy, keep praying. God is with you. He was with me and he transformed my life and I know he could do the same for you. Keep praying. It will be over. Done. <laughs> Once it's over, you're going to be joyful. You're going to be glad that you did it. I know in the beginning it's going to be scary and devastating, but once you do it, it's over. But in my next video, part two, I will be discussing my six week journey of post surgery. So look out for that video. Thanks for watching and best wishes on your myomectomy surgery. Until next time. Bye guys. Bye.